Hi, it's Billy from Sweetie Darling, and this week I'm going to show you how to use the Pro Froster on ganache whilst making an Easter basket cake. Following last week's video of me using the Pro Froster on buttercream, I had a ton of messages asking me to do the same thing on ganache. So here it is in the form of an Easter basket cake. Now, ganache isn't something I make very often at all. I tend to use a lot more buttercream than I ever do ganache. I only really ever use ganache if the weather is so hot that I know buttercream isn't going to work. I actually prefer using dark chocolate ganache or milk chocolate ganache but the kind of chocolate I had most of here was white chocolate so I'm making white chocolate ganache today which is my worst kind of ganache but we can cover some troubleshooting because it always goes wrong. So when using white chocolate I always use a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 times the amount of white chocolate to the amount of cream. Now because I don't use very much ganache I'm never quite sure on quantities of it so here I guessed and I did 400 mils of cream and 1200 grams of white chocolate. If it turned out to be too much I think I would have got away with maybe 333 grams of cream and like a kilo of white chocolate. So I mix my chocolate and my cream together in a nice big microwave bowl and then I put it in the microwave for one minute at a time because I've got quite a lot here. I would normally do only 30 seconds because you have to be so careful with white chocolate that it doesn't burn. But because I've got a lot here, I'm doing a minute at a time. Now I'll bring it out after one minute and just stir it around because I don't want any area within this chocolate cream mixture to get too hot. So I want to just distribute the heat evenly and then I can put it back in for another minute and then bring it back out and stir it again. Now each time I do this, you'll see that it gets all a little bit softer, a little bit more runny and liquidy. And I just keep repeating this one minute until it looks looks like it's almost all melted. When I've still got just a few chunks of chocolate in there, I actually leave it for a bit and then I'll stir it and see if I can melt the chocolate myself. If it's not happening, and then I'll put it back in in 10 second increments because this is the part where you don't want to overdo it. So just 10 second increments until everything is nice and melted and then it can all be stirred together. Now, as I stir white chocolate ganache, it always looks really gelatinous. So it starts off looking okay, it will look like it could pour, but it actually, it's almost like the, I don't know if the fat is splitting out of the chocolate or the cream or both, but it always ends up looking quite sloppy. And this is part of the reason why I steer away from ganache. But I will show you how to correct it. So that ganache I will leave to the side just to cool and firm up a little bit. Once it has cooled, it's probably just gonna look a bit more rubbish, a bit more gelatinous. And this time if I put my spatula and lift it up, it just flops off in like an oily mess. Now the way to correct this, if your ganache does this, is to add a bit more cream to it. Now the cream doesn't have to be hot, just pour a little bit of extra cream in there and stir it round. Now you can just use a spatula to do this or you can use a hand whisk if you prefer, whatever you need to do just to distribute that cream evenly. And this somehow brings the ganache back together again. I don't know how it works, but it works incredibly well and it saved my butt on quite a few occasions. And it's now actually my go-to method. If I have to make white chocolate ganache, instead of panicking about it, it. I know it's gonna split because it always does when I make it I don't know why and I can just add a bit of cream to it and it will be fine again so one if you make white chocolate ganache and it never splits please let me know how leave it in the comments below because I'd love to be a ganache expert two if you make white chocolate ganache and it splits don't worry add some cream and it will be fine when you're ready to use your ganache it should be a nice spreadable consistency so um, kind of like a I suppose like a chocolate spread sort of maybe a bit softer than chocolate spread because sometimes chocolate spread can be a bit tough on it so a bit softer than chocolate spread now for my Easter basket cake I'm using a chocolate cake and I'm filling it with the white chocolate ganache and a raspberry jam as well which I thought would make like a nice chocolate raspberry and white chocolate cake but actually on having a slice you can't really taste the raspberry jam so if you want a raspberry and white chocolate filling in your cake I'll either make a separate raspberry buttercream or actually add some fresh raspberries in there anything just to get a real raspberry flavor raspberry jam in chocolate cake didn't do it for me. Nevertheless, this was at the stage where I didn't know this was going to be the case. So I'm layering my chocolate cake with raspberry jam and white chocolate ganache, spreading the filling over and then putting another layer of cake on and building the cake up. Once that's all done, I can then crumb coat the cake. So for this, I'm spreading a layer of ganache around the whole cake, the sides and the top of the cake. I'm filling in any gaps and just generally evening out the whole shape of it. Now for this, of course, I'm going to be using the Pro Froster. So I'm not worried about how this crumb coat looks at the moment. I'm just getting on a foundation coat. Once that's done, unlike buttercream, you can technically leave your ganache out of the fridge or freezer and it will firm up itself. But as 
as you probably know by now, I'm not the most patient person in the world, so I whack mine in the freezer for about 10 minutes until that ganache is nice and hard. It will firm up much more quickly than buttercream does. Once it has firmed up, I bring it out of the freezer, add a load more ganache to it, and then I grab my Pro Foster. So this obviously impressed me no end with the buttercream, but I wanted to give it a go with ganache. I'd heard very good things about it with ganache, but as a non-ganache user, I was curious to see if it would work for me. So I've set my Pro Foster to the right height by using the bulldog clip mechanism, pulling it out and then easing it along the little notches on this section here. I've made it the right height for my cake, stood it against the side of the cake and drawn it around to scrape off the excess ganache. As with the buttercream, I find it's easier to do in short sections because I find a lot of build up on my scrape otherwise. I prefer to clean this off and then go back in in another short section. I've seen a lot of people just go round in one go, so you'll have to try both and see what works best for you. But you can see as I continue to go round, it's sharpening that very top corner. Now with ganache, you might find that you get some almost like holy sections in it, bits where there's clearly less ganache than other parts of the cake. When you get that, just spread more ganache over and then come in with your Pro Froster and come round again. Now, the more I do this, the more you will see I am getting perfectly straight edges along my cake and a very crisp top. And the only thing is that my Pro Froster divots into the top of my cake slightly as I'm scraping round. So once you've got a super straight side and a super crisp edge, the only thing that you might need to do is spread a little bit more ganache on the top of the cake and fill any divots in. But my verdict for the Pro Frost on ganache is it is just as amazing to use on ganache as it is with buttercream. And I love it so much. Now I feel like I should re-clarify, I'm not being paid for the Pro Frost at all, uh, it's just a piece of equipment that I have and I absolutely love it. So there are two places where you can get the Pro Froster. There is the US site which is profroster.com and in the UK we actually do have a stockist called Chrissy's Cakes and Supplies. So I'm going to link to both of those underneath the video and I'll also link to both of them in my blog post as well so either US or UK you can very easily get the Pro Foster and the UK stockers should have the pink ones in by this week. Yee! So back to the Easter basket cake. Once you've got your nice sharp edges you can cover your cake however you choose to. Now because this isn't an Easter basket I want more of a textured finish around it so I've rolled out some pink fondant and I'm cutting out small rectangles of it so it's going to look like a kind of like a basket effect. I suppose. Now for this I'm just using a ruler and I'm cutting with a pizza wheel either side of the ruler which is about an inch wide. Once I've cut my inch wide strips I am measuring two inches along my paste with my ruler and then I'm using my ruler to cut a nice straight line all the way up my paste so at the end I've got a lot of two inch by one inch rectangles. I can then paint water on the back of each of these and stick them around my cake. Now I want to um, lay them almost like bricks so you have two together and then one up here in the middle of those two. As you're laying them round, if they don't quite fit perfectly around the cake, I don't know why this happened with my first layer because the rest of the layers all went round swimmingly. My first layer just didn't work. Don't worry too much, just cut a small section off and fill that in. And remember that every cake has a back. Once you've filled the entire side of your cake with your little rectangle panels, you can then make a rope to go around the top perimeter of the cake. Kind of a contradictory video because we've got that beautiful sharp crisp edge and now I'm covering it with a rope. But the rope looks good for a basket. So for this I'm rolling a sausage of paste using my hands. When you roll a sausage, if you roll it and spread your fingers out at the same time, that's when you'll get a nice even sausage. But you need to work your way across the paste, look at any thicker sections and then do that method across the thicker bits until you end up with a fairly even sausage. You can then cut this in half and twist that together and keep twisting and twisting. You might have to move your hands along the rope of fondant because if you just keep twisting at the ends you end up with a loose section in the middle and very tight twists at each end so you might have to actually twist some in the middle and then work your way back out to the ends until it's fairly even. I then roll this together some more. This won't work if your paste is too dry. So if your paste is too dry these two ropes aren't going to meld together. They're just going to stay separate and also get a bit loose. So if you have too much corn flour on there this will happen or if your paste in general is too dry. If this does does happen, work a bit of treks into the paste, it should make it a bit softer and it should ensure that when you roll it together it actually binds together. You can then use some water around the perimeter of the cake and attach your rope around that. To make a handle I'm adding some CMC, you could use Tyler powder or gum tragacanth but add something to your paste to make it much much stronger and make it dry nice and hard. I'm rolling another sausage, a bit thinner this time, and 
cut in three sections and then unplatten them together. So pulling the right over the centre, the left over the centre and continuing until I get all the way to the end. Now if it's long enough like this, you can leave it. If it's not quite long enough, just give it a little pinch down the side so you're squishing it together a bit but also elongating it. Once you've done that, measure across the top of your cake. I did mine from in, just inside the row perimeter and mine was about 16 centimetres. So I then arrange my handle in a curve with the two straight bits at a width of 16 centimetres and I leave that to one side to dry until I can handle it. Whilst my handle is drying I can add some more detail to my basket cake. Now I've gone in between my little panels with a bit of brown dust. This is rainbow dust milk chocolate and I'm just using a small flat brush, put some dust on a brush, knock the excess off into some tissue and then brush in between my lines of my panels and this just gives it a bit more depth. You don't have to do brown here you could do a dark pink, um, you could add in different colours, so you could do some pink, some purple, some blue, which would look really pretty. You could also do that with a panel, do multicoloured panels on it. Either way, whatever you do, it just adds a bit more depth and dimension to this panelled effect. Now once your handle is dry, you should be able to use some water and either paint on the ends of the handle or on the uh, ganache on the cake, and then just stand the handle on it. As long as it's nice and dry, it will stay there. It's not completely dry, you'll stand it up and gradually that curve in the middle it was going to lower, 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 and potentially even tear. So be patient with it. Once the handle is on, you can fill your basket with whatever you choose. I have used mini eggs because I love mini eggs, but you could do a whole variety of different things. If you get some of those small Easter eggs, you could put a couple of those in there, some cream eggs, some mini eggs, some little flowers if you want to, some little bunnies, that would be cute. It's your basket. Fill it with whatever you choose. So that is how to make an Easter basket cake and how to use the Pro Froster on ganache. I will put the link to the blog post and where you can get the Pro Froster right underneath this video. I hope you enjoyed this Easter video cross Pro Froster review number two and I will see you next Monday.